In the previous video, we uh, went through the process of designing this, so drawing up the crease pattern and, and uh, measuring the proportion of the graft. So make sure you go check out that last video, otherwise you might be a little bit lost. And then uh, in this video, we're actually going to go fold it. Now, real life ostriches are actually kind of black and white, so or black and pink or whatever. So I'm going to use a black sheet of kami, and uh, 15 centimeters should be good enough. Feel free to follow along. This is I'm going to go step by step. It's basically a tutorial. I'm going to start by dividing it into fifths. Now, if you don't know how to do that, there are some ways. I'm going to show you my personal favorite way. Now, let's go ahead and fold it in half. Now we're going to make fold this line, which has a slope of two. Don't do it too sharp. Now, this point actually is actually at the point uh, one fifth, two fifths. If we fold our line up to here, now we're folding a line one fifth. This is one fifth that we're folding right now. And so there is a proof for this, um, and I do know how to do it. If you're interested, leave a comment in the, the comment section. Maybe one day we'll make a video about proving this theorem that that is actually one fifth. It's a uh, math is cool, bro. Now we don't need to make a five by five grid. We just need the five for the graft. Okay. Now remember that we have our color side up when we're doing this, so we're going to. Go ahead and uh, start. Well, let's go ahead and pre-crease the bird base into this big section out here. Um, let's do white side up so you can see the creases a little easier. So um, depends how lazy you want to be. I'm going to be pretty lazy and just crease pre-crease through the layers. I did that in the last video. It was not a great idea. Alright, and that should give us all the creases we need for our bird base. Now let's do um, the pleats. Alright, black side up. Remember, black side up. Now let's go ahead and collapse the graft itself. So I'm going to do a wide side up just so you can see it a little easier. You see the shadow is a little easier, but uh, let's go ahead and collapse it in. Again, if you know crease patterns, it should be a breeze. If you no don't know crease patterns, this might be a little rougher. All right, now we got our square. We can go ahead and just make our bird base. So flip it over. I'm not gonna. I've, we already did our, our cre pre creasing. We don't need to go through, you know, the regular preliminary base and all that. We just go ahead and collapse it in. It's hard to see the shadows and stuff. Anyways, all right. Here we go. And so you can you'll see that this is. Um, these flaps with the leg flaps are significantly thicker. And that's because we got more paper here and we have more room for detail. You also notice that this head, we were successful, it actually is longer. Look at that, see? So our grafting worked. So I, didn't, I know I didn't show it very thoroughly last time, but um, we're gonna go like this. We're gonna start by color changing them. Loosen this. 
last time we would so okay so this top part is pretty simple and we just uh, inside reverse we just unwrap it it's pretty easy to just go like that but the bottom half has our pleats on it and so we can't just straight up unwrap it let's let's start by unwrapping the bottom one first the one with the uh, all the pleats on it so it'll look like that there's there's the main thing unwrapped then we gotta actually go un unpull these apart and reverse these creases like that and now the pleats have their white showing whereas before they had the black showing Now we can um, unwrap here. Okay, and same thing, all that on the other side. And uh, when we go back and, so after we fold this, after we're done, um, after we're satisfied with our crease pattern, we're done tweaking and everything, We'll go in and, and draw this in a, in a complete crease pattern. Really flat foldable. Uh, flat foldable enough for Orihime to fold to collapse it. Uh, we'll make all the mountain valley correct. We'll, you know, we'll display that there is a reversing of the pleats halfway down right here. Uh, everything will be great. And so if, I don't know if I'll have completed the crease pattern by now. If it is complete, um, it will be up on the screen. Now let's go ahead and shape the toes. So reverse fold in and out at a 22 and a half degree angle. So 22 and a half is the angle you're gonna hear all the time. So like the bird base, crease base, all the traditional bases are considered 22 and a half bases because the creases on them are at an angle of 22 and a half. You also hear a lot of models that are not from traditional bases but are 22 and a half. For example, um, uh, Satoshi Kamiya's Ancient Dragon is from 22 and a half. Um, a lot of the a lot of other Japanese models are 22 and a half. I personally do not have much experience with uh, 22 and a half, other than the traditional bases. I don't really know how to how to do it. But if I did, I would teach it. And maybe if I can figure it out in the future, I'll teach it then. So there's our toes, right? So when we fold it in half, we can see our legs are color changed. We're on the right track. We'll go and do the details later. So we need to outside reverse fold here, something like this, and we'll figure out how to color change. So at this point, this is the point where I'm going to pull up the ostrich picture for myself. So last time, the color change went all the way down, when in fact the color change actually stops here, and it's the solid, solid colored body. Um, you see this, this flap that we grafted on, it doesn't really have any detail on it, but it gave us extra length, and that extra length will allow us to, you know, open it up and squash things and, and do extra stuff with it and make our own details. It just gives us more options if we have more paper up there. So I'm going to do something cursed. I'm just going to manually and turn it inside out. Like that. And that will force a color change. How do we do this the better way? Okay, let's um, do something like this. There we go. That's pretty good. Yeah, so actually I like that a lot. So let's just uh, unwrap just the first, just this first layer. And then, yeah, reverse fold. and then that's pretty nice. All right, there's our white neck now. And we can go ahead and shape that into place. So from here on is uh, pretty much just shaping, I think. So let's um, thin the legs out, then thighs. So I'm going to fold them into the center, like that. Mm -hmm. How 
do how do I don't know how the toes work. I don't have a I don't have a feet pick of them. And if we had larger paper, maybe this small paper size was a mistake. Because it's turning kind of black. Kind of messying through. Let's squash the toes a little bit. And then um they're kind of bent, the legs are kind of bent forward like that, something like that. And then they have their toes. Remember the toes was um, what the whole, we went through this whole, um, this whole lesson about the toes. And also, I think the proportions are pretty good. I think that we aimed pretty well. Do the same shaping on the other side. That's a much cleaner foot here. So something like that, that's pretty good. They're pretty good ostrich legs, something like that. Now we can curve the back preemptively. Um, what I did for the tail last time was I just made a bunch of pleats, or crimps, pleats, I have no idea. I don't know, I always mix up the crimp and pleat vocabulary. And then all right, like that, and then we can kind of just fold it and just fold this whole tail. And I know it's a waste, but it's uh, it makes the model look better, a little better. All right, you're looking in shape. This guy's looking pretty strong. This guy does not skip leg day, am I right? This top flap, there's really no purpose to it. It just adds some extra detail. We can just pleat it again, something like that. Okay, now the neck. Um, how does the neck go? It's, it needs to thin out. kind of did something here. Yeah, that actually looks pretty good. I like that. Let's pleat the beak a little bit. Uh, no, their their beaks are not normal. At least not normal that I know that I'm used to for folding for birds. Good. How is it? It, look, it looks like it looks like this, doesn't it? Am I right? Am I wrong? It looks kinda of like this or something like that. This is their head. It's really weird. And it's biology. I don't know biology. Is it well, I don't know why these or ornithology maybe? I don't know. Proportions might be a little bit off. I think we made the little head a little too big. We can maybe thin the neck by mushing. Okay, I think this is satisfactory. So we completed our goal in the design. We made the head a little longer. We, we also fixed the color change, which we didn't set out to do, but it happened. And we added toes. Also notice, notice how the um, notice the size difference. It actually is a little bit shorter. Obviously the head is a little longer because we grafted it, but the general body is shorter. That's because um, remember we we weren't we not we're not adding things onto the paper. We're redistributing. So we had to shrink the bird base in order that we had room for the graft. So that's why the bird is this one is a little bit shorter, smaller than the other one. This maybe I'll do a nicer fold of this on a better paper or whatnot. For now, I think that's pretty good as an example. I think that was a successful example. Again, that was not staged. Um, all the designing you saw today was just um, designing on the spot. So yeah, that's an example that hopefully you can use in your future designs, in your homework. Um, and then let me know how it goes. Let me know how it goes for sure. As for homework, for this lesson's homework, uh, last time I said, okay, let's make the walrus, ostrich, and giraffe. And we were all going to do that, and that was the ideas that I gave you. This time, I don't actually have any of those suggestions. Um, next class, we'll do more grafting, and then maybe I will have some of those ideas that we'll all do. 
But for now, your homework is to just use grafting in a design and just uh, mess around with it, do what you can. You can graft a bird base, fish base, frog base, or any other base. You can also try these other um, arrangements of strips or whatever you want. Just use the same ideas and we'll learn more things, more tricks and tips and tricks in the next video. But for now, I want you to give it a try. Uh, use what you've learned today in an actual design and that's how you learn. Also, uh, I will be featuring homework that people turn in. So if you, if you know the Discord server, there's a homework submissions channel. If you do the homework and you post it, I'll feature it in the next video that I record. So these are some of the bird base homeworks that people turned in. So starting with uh, Hifia, I think this was an old design, but he made a, uh, a bug from a frog base. That's very nice. This one is a Blintz bird base, which we didn't actually go through in the video, but this is uh, Chris's wolf. The Blintz bird base gives you a lot of flaps, which looks like Chris used to make um, the jaw and the ears in addition to the legs and tail, which you would expect. So that's a good use of all the extra flaps, so very nice. But on the downside, because there's so many flaps, it looked like it got a little bit thick, but that's that's okay. Uh, it's not a huge trade-off. So like we got a bird base from Shadow 8. So bird base meaning, you know, it's four flaps. So you got the uh, the one in the back, the, the two wings, and the one in the front. So that's four long flaps, which bird base fits great. And then the center flap is tucked away somewhere. Or maybe this is the center flap, I'm not sure. Either way, great job. Good job, Shadow. Uh, here's Flex Tape Ultra, his Diving Kingfisher. So again, this is a bird base, as he said. As you can tell, there's four flaps. Um, clearly four flaps, and he looks like he did a color change in the back, which is very nice. Yeah, Flex is very good at making birds. Then we got uh, Noah. So this is very clean and sharp. This looks like a final fold almost, which is great. And uh, he doesn't have a title, but it looks very aesthetically pretty. He says it's from a fish base, so we'll learn more about how color change work, but basically, um, I'm guessing that these uh, big colors on the side were from the big flaps and then these small color changes were from the small flaps and we'll learn more how to do that but very good job to know that's, I like how this looks. We got uh, the folder so this is a dragonfly. I'm guessing this is a frog base. Guessing by that there's uh, five long flaps and looks like some extra paper in the head I'm guessing. So there's no caption but Pretty nice. Vish, Vishwad R. He's got a nice dragon. I really, I like the, the wing pleats. Um, looks very good. Very good shaping on this one. And looks like he's got the tail and neck pleats too. Good. Very good. Uh, and this is a bird base, which you can tell because uh, there's four long flaps, so wings, head, tail. So bird base is pretty good for, for dragons and birds in general. All right. Teacher from a frog base. So this frog base will give you a lot of extra flaps. So I'm not, I'm not sure if uh, Tubi used all the flaps, but Tubi did get some pretty good color change. I like the like the collar and the hair. That's very good. I think it might have ripped, but uh, you know, if you just try it again, it'll be great the second time. Here's Ugly Skep. So it looks like he got all three of the suggested models, which again, there's just suggestions. You could go and do your own things. You got the giraffe. Is that a frog base? It could be a bird. I'm not sure. It looks like it only has th three legs. Either way, it looks pretty good. And the walrus is as uh, expected. So, uh, and then the ostrich also looks pretty good. He also got the, the color change on the t on the tusks. That's very nice. Eternal Origami's got this uh, ostrich. So looks pretty good, right? You got the nice tail shaping, uh, pretty similar to what we got here. And then some better. I like this neck shaping. Okay, and then the refolds so always looks nice on the second try. All right, this one. This is a DRW. This one, this is pretty clever. This is a bird base, and it looks like he point splitted one of them into ears. So look, this looks like the official or like the you know Lang's optimized point splitting. And then here's the nose for the center flap. And then the other three long flaps on the bird base turn into the legs and tail. Uh, so that's very clever, very good job. This one, this is uh, Joseph Fleming. You may know him from his book that he published for free. But this is a, a goldfish, which is actually from a preliminary base and had a graft. So you know, he went way ahead of the homework and just did his own thing. Which, Because, you know, he's already a designer. He already knows what he's doing. A kiosh, also a really good designer who already knows what he's doing. He made an albatross with a fish base, which is really nice because the albatross has way longer wings than the head and tail, uh, which fits the fish base perfectly because it has two long flaps and two short flaps. That's a great use. And also the color changes on the tips are very clean, very nice paper. Looks like a finished product. I think the last or second to last one. So uh, origami trees. Got a cicada from water bomb base. Not exactly sure how he did this one, but it looks like he's got some nice legs somehow. 
and uh, maybe he grafted them on. There's also the good color changes, so very, very clean. Also very finished and polished. Mad respect, because I did my own homework, I didn't polish it very much. And then here's Joseph Fleming, updated his uh, goldfish from before. Well, also still really good. All right. All right, so if you do this episode's homework, you make a graft something, you graft on toes or extra length or extra details or something. Uh, so join the Discord, the link is in the description. Go to homework submissions and drop the photo in, and then you'll be in the next video. Uh, stay inspired, and I'll see you next time.